What's going on everyone? We are finally back at the beach. It's been a long season of being quarantined home in Maryland. We finally found a good opportunity to come to North Carolina and fish the beaches. Today we're going to be talking about two of the very best and the most popular surf fishing rigs out there. And if you don't know what they are already, you're going to learn today. But those are the Fish Finder Rig and the High Low Rig. These are very effective rigs that I use on the surf pretty much whatever surf I go to. Am I getting a bite? <laughs> we're going to be talking about why use each rig. What's the benefit of using a Fish Finder Rig? What's the benefit of using a High Low Rig? When you're choosing your rigs, it's important to choose according to the conditions. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. So yesterday I went and caught all my fresh bait from the lighthouse over there on the sound side. Um, I cast netted for mullet, caught a lot of mullet, spot, shrimp, all sorts of stuff. And if you haven't seen that episode, I teach you guys how to use a cast net. Um, I'll link it up right here or somewhere right here. Right there. Or here. Emma, you're gonna to have to figure that one out. <laughs> we caught some fresh bait so that we can use on the surf today. Um, there's no better way to get on fish than to catch the local bait fish and throw it out. Welcome to camp. Welcome to camp. We finally made it here. Here's the bait from yesterday. I've already used some, but I kept, I put some salt on it, some sea salt, and I put it on ice as soon as I caught it. As soon as I caught it, I put it on ice. It's important, it's very important to have fresh bait. The fresher, the better. And um, it's, really, it's really nice to keep your bait in your Hey Skipper Squiddy Bits bait box right here. So I've got my squid in here, shrimp, and the different mullets that I caught. It's great to keep um, because salt will help preserve it. Keep it fresh. So when I'm cutting my bait, I'm cutting it in this bait box right here. My scissors are attached to the bait box. And pieces like this, just like this for the high-low rig, right? Versus a piece like this for the fish finder rig. So the first thing I do when I get to a spot on the beach is I scope out the actual spot. I take a look at the water, I read the waves, and I try and find a good spot that I think will be a fishy area. Now, I found an area here where the sandbar meets the land. And this is gonna be a high activity place for a lot of different fishes. So what I'm gonna do right now is set up my rods. This is my heaver, what's called a heaver. A heaver is meant to throw a lot of weight and a heavy bait. Heavy bait, heavy weight. <laughs> this can throw three to 10 ounces. Honestly, I should have gotten the one that throws up to 12 ounces, but this is what I've got right now. For my reel, I've got a Saragossa 8,000 sized um, with monofilament on here and my rig here this is the fish finder rig that I'm talking about now typically your fish finder rig would have a longer leader line like this but I've got a short little line like this because I'm fishing for drum and drum don't really care about that leader line now the benefit of having a short leader line like this is when you cast it it won't helicopter in the air this keeps it compact and allows it to go really far and um, really far and really fast. So with this, I've got such a big hook on here. You see this, I, I tied it with a 100 pound leader line right here. This is a 100 pound mono. And then I crimped it with this. And then I put it onto a 150 pound swivel, two way swivel. And that's my fish finder rig part. I put a bead, tied a clinch knot to another swivel onto my eight ounce sinker. Now this is just a fish finder rig specifically for big red drum. You can adjust the length of this and the size of this hook and the size of this sinker to whatever fish you want to catch. But now the benefit of using a fish finder rig here is when you cast it out, you can cast it out very far. And when you cast it out and a fish takes it, it won't necessarily know it's on a rig because this thing slides all the way up and down. 
so it's very inconspicuous and easy to throw a big bait. Big bait usually means big fish, but big fish aren't easy to come by. They're not always there. So I've, I've got another rod with a high-low rig, which catches a lot of different kinds of sizes of fish. So I'm gonna bait this one up, and then I'll bait my other one up. For this one, I can throw out a whole mullet like this. You see that? Put the whole mullet through. Right through the head, just like that. See that? Here in North Carolina, the Hatteras area, this is called the Hatteras Heaver. Um, and a lot of people have conventional reels, mono, monofilament line, and heavy rods that are able to throw eight to 12 ounces of weight. They need that much weight to one, get it out there, two, hold the weight out there, and three, when you're fishing with other people, you wanna be throwing similar weights. You don't wanna be tangling up with everyone. In fact, people actually get kind of mad when you're throwing braid and you're throwing like a two ounce sinker. So if you're new, I suggest you just kind of watch the locals first before you jump in and play the game because you can mess the game up for other people when you're playing and you don't know how to play. So let's cast this out. There is a special technique to throw uh, this much weight. It's called the Hatteras cast. I'm gonna try and show to you the best I can. I'm still working on it myself. It's all in this left hand. When you're whipping it, you're bringing this across your face and in like that. And this hand is pushing forward. Watch. Oh, I saw a bait fish out there. I saw a bait fish as soon as I casted it out there. There's probably something out there. Now, this is a high-low rig. It's attached to my leader line with a 150 pound swivel. Uh, this is 50 pound line. I attach circle hooks to a T knot right here. Same thing with this. And then to my Sputnik sinker. Now notice how I have swivel at the top and at the bottom to connect. This is because in the surf, things get spun around they get spun around and pushed around by the current. The two-way swivel and the swivel here allows the bait to swing around freely without tangling your line. It's very important if you wanna achieve the next level of your fishing rigs. So now for this, instead of putting on a whole mullet like this, I'm actually gonna just cut it in half. Just like that. Just cut it up like chunks, like that. And then, you don't want to squish this meat, you want to delicately hook it. You want to hook it right through that bone right here, so that it doesn't fly off when you throw it. So we got two pieces just like this. Pink? My lines are set, except I've got one more rod that I want to throw out another high-low rig for. This other high-low rig here is essentially the same exact thing that I had on my other one. Um, except this line is a little bit thicker. And with this one, I'm going to be throwing something different. This one is going to be a combination. I've got a lot of assortments of baits here. Here's our newest salted clams here. These are Hokugai clams that have actually naturally red on here that I think will attract a lot of fish. So I'm gonna give this a try. Some of our shrimpy bits. Here's our brand new starter kit right here. It comes with two packs of it in this, in this smaller bait box right here. Same idea. Put all of your shrimp into here and store your bait in here. Let me try a piece of this. This looks really good, this surf clam. Oh yeah, look at that. That's really good clam meat right here. I mean, this is good enough for human consumption, but don't eat it. I'm gonna cut a strip off of clam like that. Another strip like that. And here, I'll put a piece of mullet like this. And then a strip of 
the tough clam just like this. The clam should keep it stuck. Hook it only once so that it flows in correctly. Because fish like to bite the mullet off real quick. And then you have, you're left with nothing. But this, this salted bait that I do is nice and tough. So even if, you're, if your bait leaves your hook, you still got bait on there. Even if they eat all the mullet off, you still got a little piece of bait, just like this. And these salted baits are 100% all natural. So you don't have to worry about throwing plastic into our oceans, just like that. That's perfectly baited. Okay. I might have gotten a fish on here. Yeah, I did. What's that? Bluefish. It's a bluefish. That's awesome. You see, the high low rig catches different kinds of fish. Whereas that that uh, fish finder rig will catch big fish. This will catch different size fish and lots of them. This is a bluefish, or if you're from Australia, they call them a tailor. And this is a small size. I would call this a snapper sized. Too small. So I'm gonna release him. Although you could cut him up and use him as bait. Right. I've got a lot of mullet. I'd rather not kill another fish. Well, come on and show it off. Whoa! That's a nice one. That's must be like 20 inches. You got a ruler on your cooler. Speckle trout. Beautiful. Give it a measure. It. <laughs> 19. No. 19 and a half. Do you remember what keeper is? That's definitely keeper. Yeah, that's keeper. I think 15 inches speckled trout. That's beautiful. There we go. Caught that on cut mullet. Huh? <laughs> he was on there while you were reeling him in. Yeah. Now, are you fishing for shrimp? Did you catch him on? Uh, mullet. Cut mullet. Cut mullet. Cut mullet, yeah. But I, they love shrimp, so if you got shrimp, we got some shrimp. then they're going to like it. Okay. Yeah. Speckled right. trout. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I can't believe I've got a nice fish on that. Right. Which one? Hold on, hold on. We got one. Another bluefish. Another little bluefish. And it bit the clam one. Hey yo. That's a perfect example. Mullet gone, clam on. See, mullet gone. 
clam on. Oh, you like that, huh? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> but that's a, that's a tiny little one. Here, let's untangle that. Yeah. But I, I want to release this guy first. Yeah. Something on? Yeah. What is it? Another little snapper blue. Tiny little guy. Hit the clams right here. Took all the mullet, clams left on. That's another fish for the high low rig. But I want dinner fish. I want something that I can bring home and eat. Mm -hmm. I want some fish and chips. Ooh. That's not big enough for fish and chip. That's fish in one chip. One chippy fish. Wait, that would be one fish with chip. That would be chip. fish How does it plus affect? chip. And <laughs> that fish would just be the chip. <laughs> I still need to catch them. <laughs> so these clams are actually not for sale. I am currently still field testing them. Anytime I release a new bait, I field test it for months and months uh, and try and perfect the recipe prior to releasing it for any kind of sale. Um, so right now we're just trying to work on perfecting the formula. But so far it's been working pretty darn well. It's really tough and when it hits the water, it reconstitutes its old form, but still maintains its toughness. And it's all natural, which is the best part about it. Natural, all natural. Just like that. I casted a mullet off by accident. Oops. Whatever, this is the one with clams on it, so I can keep it on. I don't have to recast oh, it. Oh, that's good. Cool. I'm pretty sure I'll catch another little snapper like mm -hmm. that. Or watch me catch like a sheep's head or something. That would be awesome. I know sheep's head love clams. Are you happy to be back on the beach? Oh, I am so happy to be back on the beach. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been able to surf fish. But I mean, this is, this is pretty safe. There's not many people around us. And uh, yeah, with the whole Corona thing going on, it's been kind of hard to travel. Aaron, Bill. Recording? Yeah. You need to sit. It's a hook. Is it on? I think so. Yeah. Does it feel any bigger? <laughs> You can't tell, huh? I can't even tell. Whoa! Is it pulling? I think so. What is it? What is it? What it's is it? It's a trout! No, it's a trout! It's a trout! Yeah! Oh no, it's a trout! Another trout! Yeah, another trout! Woo. There you go! Woo! That's a nice one! Yeah! That was on the Ooh, clam. This one has teeth though. Nice. <laughs> that was fun. There Let you go. And I cast it out. That was this one was a far one. I had to cast it far to get this one. Speckled trout. 19, same thing. The other one's a little bit bigger. So I told you the fresh bait works really well and it seems like that high low rig That high low rig is what's catching them Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again That was on the, the clam mullet combo, right? Yep, the clam mullet combo Let's do that again. We love to give them the combo platter I think the placement The placement of the cast is so important if you don't cast in the right place, if you don't cast in that, that highway, you're not going to get anything. How do you know where to cast? You have to look at the waves and the way the waves break on the sand. 
bringing in the big rod again. Nothing has seemed to touch it at all. Oh, and that's all that's left. <laughs> Just the head. That was a whole pinfish before. Okay, so it probably got bitten up by bluefish or something. Huh. So, as you see, this rod gets bitten, but you don't get as many fish. But I'm still having it out there because I'm waiting for that big fish to come along. Which, it might not. So honestly, to have these other two rods out at the same time really keeps me entertained. Plus, we've got some nice fish on the other two rods anyways. Big baits do catch big fish, but so do small baits. Small baits catch big fish as well. Sometimes you gotta throw big, sometimes you gotta throw small, but sometimes you gotta throw both. Yeah. That was an awesome day of fishing on the surf. We got a few different, a couple of different kinds of species. We caught a lot of them. And honestly, we got two nice fish for dinner. It was really awesome. This is pretty much best case scenario for me. Although I didn't get... Although I didn't get... <laughs> I just casted this one. I just casted it out. Look at that Stella go. Like butter. Oh, another, another trout. trout! Woo! That's great. 14's keeper. That's 14. Oh, it's beautiful. Let me get a close-up of the pattern. Wow. So they love that fresh mullet. Oh, just beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Well, what are we doing? 14 and a half. 14 and a half. Keeper size. Keep them. This is my favorite fish for like a for fried a fish, fry, fish right? sandwich. Oh, with coleslaw. Oh, yeah. On a fresh bun. Oh, the best. Another one. Heck yeah. Whew. Another nice speckled trout. Beautiful, right off the surf. That one bit the shrimpy bits. Mullet combo. That is nice. Holy cow. We're getting a lot of fish today. Well, you caught your limit on trout. Woo. We did it. All right. Woo. We got dinner, that's for sure. Just goes to show, it's really effective to use two different kinds of rigs and very fresh bait. That's my tip. Well, it looks like we're having fish for dinner tonight. Just goes to show, using both rigs at the same time can be very beneficial. Because if you only use, if I only used that fish finder rig that whole time, I would have came back with nothing. Simply having a different kind of rig out at the same time allowed us to have all those extra fish, all those extra fun, all those extra fun memories. Looks like day one back at the beach has been a success. Yeah, uh, missed it. And it's really, been, it's really been good to get back onto the beach and back to my favorite kind of fishing. I love fishing in Maryland. I love fishing like inshore stuff too, but there's nothing like being on the beach, casting out into the ocean and not knowing what you're gonna get. That's the funnest part for me. If you guys want some more help, I teach how to tie every single one of these rigs on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. 
I teach all the different kinds of baits that you can use, how to hook it up, how to rig it up, how to throw it, where to throw it, when to throw it. I write a lot of different, I write a lot of different kind of books like this. It's all on our website, heyskipperfishing.com. We also make all these different kinds of salted bait, salted shrimp, salted squid, and currently we're experimenting with the salted clam, which today we caught so many uh, bluefish with. Currently not for sale, but the squiddy bits and the shrimpy bits are. We've got these nice new boxes that allow you to keep any of your bait in there for both the shrimpy bits and the squiddy bits. If you want to try that, that's on our website. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week. Thank you all for oh! Oh. Bring it on over. Nice. And that's the last one of the day.